Good evening, students. This is Mr. Boudreau. Uh, today we're going to be going over the Republic of Texas unit. Uh, so make sure you guys have about four sheets of paper and get ready to roll. Uh, this is the first sheet if you want to go ahead and pause and start copying some notes. Alright, first of all, I'd like to give you a little memory trick to help you remember the order for the presidents. Uh, well, first of all, first of all, you're going to start off with your main course of a Sam sandwich, that's Lamar, between two slices of Sam bread. <laughs> uh, and then you've got a side of Jones soda, and we'll talk more about why he's a side later. Let's go ahead and launch right into it. we got Sam Houston. Uh, there are four big things that we want to talk about for his first term. Uh, first and foremost is the money. Uh, Sam Houston was the first president, and that was back in uh, 36, 1836, a date that you all should be well aware of now. Uh, but the money is the big issue, because you see, the Republic of Texas starts off with a debt of about two million dollars. And that is a big deal, because that's not really going to go down, it's going to go up. But Sam Houston thought that, that was the first thing he needed to be worried about, getting the debt down. Uh, at this time, he sets the capital at Houston. because at the time they were all, uh, the whole government was being basically run out of a shed. So they moved to the capital, to Houston, to try and start getting some government buildings built. Uh, next up we have the views on Native Americans. Uh, Sam Houston was big about this because he was actually raised by the Cherokee for a couple of years uh, when he was growing up. So for that matter, you can always remember that Sam Houston will always be positive on Indian relations. Uh, he wants peace, nothing more, nothing less. He absolutely thinks that man can li uh, that the Texas, the Republic of Texas, could live together with the Indians. Uh, it tries to start several treaties, even though they're shut down later by Congress, specifically the Senate. Uh, next up, we have views on annexation. Uh, this really doesn't change for Houston, but he is always positive on annexation as well. He wants to be annexed into the U.S., uh, and there are several reasons for that. First of all, most Texans, uh, most Anglo-Texans, came from the United States, so there's this huge cultural bond that goes with it that they definitely want to be brought back into the States. Uh, in addition, with that debt, and again, that debt is only going to climb, uh, it feels that the U.S. can definitely help with that, um, with money, to try and get rid of some of that debt. Um, finally, we've got the next, or not finally, sorry. Secondly, we've got Mirabel Lamar. Uh, he's that second president of te uh, the Republic of Texas. Lamar is basically the opposite of Sam Houston. And uh, you're going to see that the back and forth really doesn't do too well for a fledgling nation, for a very new nation. Uh, Lamar, his view on money is, well, you can spend some. in order to hopefully get better in the future. That's one of the big things that he actually does is start up public education, giving him the title of Father of Education. So the debt continues to rise under Lamar. Uh, it just about doubles, actually. Uh, next up, he moves the capital to Austin. And some of you may remember, uh, it wasn't originally Austin, it was originally called Waterloo. Oh, I can't remember if it's LOO or LOO. Um, at any rate, Austin was the capital then, and it has continued to be the capital since then. Uh, next up, his views on Native Americans. He was very against having peace with Native Americans. He actually kind of uh, greenlit or uh, approved of several projects where the rangers would go in and burn Cherokee villages, ki kill chiefs, um, and try to force them out. He wants the Native Americans out of Texas. Uh, and I think you all remember that he was the one who, uh, it was under his presidency that Chief Bowles, uh, ooh, Uh, ended up getting killed in one of the battles. 
Uh, finally, his views on annexation were the opposite of Houston. Again, his view was negative on that. He thought that Texas could become its own big nation. He thought that we could become a superpower uh, given the right opportunities. And the only way we would do that is by staying our own country rather than submitting to the will of the United States. There are two big events that happen under Lamar's presidency. First we have uh, the Council House fight and then the Santa Fe expedition. Uh, the Council House fight was a fight between uh, the Anglos of the Republic of Texas and the Comanche. Uh, what ends up happening is they're fighting, uh, there's the Comanche Wars going on, and the two sides decide they're going to try and meet up for some kind of peace treaty uh, to stop the bloodshed. Uh, they agree on this only under the circumstance that the Comanche delegates or negotiators are going to bring all of their captives to this council house in order to talk about peace. When they show up, uh, the, the Republic of Texas is very upset to see that only one prisoner is brought with them, a teenage girl. Uh, she then informs them that there are many more captives, I think there are about 17 with that tribe, that were not brought to the negotiation. Uh, this kind of makes all of the trust disappear from the situation. So the Anglos tell the Comanche that they're going to be imprisoned, uh, they're going to be held prisoner, and they're going to be uh, used as kind of a bargaining chip in order to get the other Anglo prisoners back from the Comanche. Uh, the Comanche don't like this very much, uh, and they end up starting to try to flee. A fight breaks out, and 35 Comanche end up dying, uh, where s only seven of the Republic of Texas end up dying. So this is a big mistake because essentially the Comanche Wars continue. Comanches continue to raid villages, uh, to raid settlements that are from the Republic of Texas. Um, the biggest blunder of Lamar's presidency, though, comes with the Santa Fe Expedition. Lamar um, wanted to show that Texas had strength. He wanted to kind of show Mexico that they weren't to be bullied around. Because if we remember, Texas thinks that the border is down here along the Rio Grande River or Rio Grande, uh, and Mexico believes that the river is right here, next to the Nueces River. So Texas is a lot smaller than Texas as we know it today, um, kind of didn't really seem all that intimidating. So Lamar said, decided he was going to send some troops to Santa Fe, uh, a very important trading post, to try and capture it from the Mexican army. But they didn't have a very good time. See, on the way, they ran short of water, they ran short of food, and then they got attacked by Native Americans. So by the time they actually reached Santa Fe, they had had their three strikes. That, that team was out. Uh, they got there, they got captured very quickly, and then marched all the way down to Mexico City. Uh, very few of them survived, and the ones who did uh, were end, uh, ended up being released eventually. But the big thing is... Santa Fe, the easiest way to remember it would be that this is kind of like the Texans lost this last weekend. It was, what, 30 to 0? Uh, it was pretty embarrassing. And the way that all of us kind of feel about that match, the, oh, that's awful. That's how people were thinking about this show of force that Lamar tried to do. Because the Santa Fe expedition was a complete failure. Uh, and it has some consequences that carry on into Sam Houston's next presidency. Uh, no real legislative payback was made for Lamar because he was pretty much on his way out of the presidency at that time. So there was no real use in kind of trying to get him removed. But at any rate, Sam Houston comes back in as the next president. Uh, nothing has really changed. The money, uh, Sam Houston believes in kind of conserving. So. He wants to save money. And that's why he actually ends up cutting all the, a lot of the education that Lamar had. He cuts the Navy that Lamar made and essentially cuts government spending to only $500,000 a year. Unfortunately, 
even with all of these cuts, the debt still goes up. And it's just skyrocketing at this time. We end up with the same thing for uh, Native Americans. Sam Houston is still very positive, and he still wants peace. Uh, unfortunately, though, Lamar's presidency kind of breeds some distrust, and it's a really tough uphill battle for Sam Houston to find that peace. Uh, he still feels the same way about the USA. He wants annexation. He thinks that's a good thing. Uh, and again, all of the reasons we talked about earlier are the same reasons. The debt is too high, they want it to be paid off, uh, they need some protection from Mexico, uh, and they're pretty much, they just want kind of to be part of where they came from, part of the United States. Uh, there are two big events in Sam Houston's second presidency. You have the Archives War and then the Mier Expedition. With the Archives War, uh, Mexico kind of starts to invade Texas after the Santa Fe expedition. So this is a result of the Santa Fe expedition. Um, Mexico starts to invade and kind of in a panic, Sam Houston sends people to Austin um, to try and remove the archives. So we've got the city of Austin and Mexico isn't too terribly far away. They're kind of right down here. Um, and they want to get the archives out of Austin and remove them all the way down to Houston. Now the people in Austin see this and they think that uh, Houston is trying to move the capital back to Houston. So what they end up doing uh, is firing on the Texas Rangers and everybody else who was trying to come get these archives, these government documents, and move them to a safe location. Um, and it's a small skirmish, but it's an interesting insight into how kind of tense things were between the citizens of Houston, or citizens of Texas, sorry. Uh, the other event is the Mier Expedition. Again, to kind of guard the border from Mexico, Houston sends 700 troops down to Laredo to guard the border. Uh, when they found that the Mexican troops weren't going to be attacking, they actually uh, were ordered to withdraw. But 300 troops decided that they were going to go down and invade Mexico against orders and go to Mier. Uh, while they were there, they were captured, uh, and a lot of them escaped. So once they escaped, uh, 176 of them were recaptured by Santa Ana's troops. And the 176 of them, uh, while in prison, Santa Ana told their jailers that due to the escape, they should be punished. So one out of every ten soldiers was going to be executed. This is what we call the black bean incident. And if you guys remember from class, you all were given beans. Uh, everybody with the black bean was sentenced to execution, whereas everybody with the white bean was sentenced to two years in jail. Um, so, it was a pretty bad <laughs> misstep for those who decided that they were going to go down uh, to Mier. So that's Sam Houston's second term. Uh, and then we end up with the third president, Dr. Anson Jones. Now again, the debt here is just rising and rising. And here's where I want to talk about the Redbacks. You see, you had these uh, dollar bills that were made for the Republic of Texas. And these were called the Redbacks, due to their color. Um, this was issued back during Lamar's presidency. Uh, but here's where they really get kind of crazy. Uh, during this time, it's actually illegal to pay the Texas government with redbacks for taxes. That would be the same way as um, if the United States were to say, okay, you owe me $3,000 in taxes, but you can't use U.S. dollars to pay them because they're worthless. So what this kind of shows is that the Texas government is losing more and more, not only economically, but also politically, because at this point, there's not much trust in that government. Um, Jones's view on Indians was very positive. He believed that they could live peaceful. 
So he was also looking for peace, like Sam Houston. Uh, when we come to his views on annexation, he actually remained pretty quiet. So there are a lot of sources out there about him saying good things about annexation. Um, most of them tend to be kind of after the fact, uh, as it was already happening. But he kind of remained quiet to save his political career, and in a twist of irony, uh, it actually ended up making it to where he was unelectable. He wanted to be the first governor of the state of Texas, but that was kind of impossible because he lost a lot of trust from the people. Uh, and the rest of his page is blank because after that, we get annexation. Oops, sorry. Annexation in 1846. So that's kind of a real quick run through of the Republic of Texas. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you uh, post them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. Other than that, have a great night and I will see you all tomorrow.